What other complaints? What you know the most. Oh, you know the biggest complaint ever on TV. The most complaints ever for anything on TV was the showing of the Last Temptation of Christ. Yeah. Do you know the second? Yeah, the s second was, was I think Anne Robinson um, put in the Welsh into Room 101. What? Because she didn't like him or that. Yeah, she just said, well, they're, you know, they're going in the net, you know. Can on, she can said it slightly more eloquently than that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I can on the people or the place. I don't know. I think, I think it, it was the place and therefore the people. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean, yeah? No, well, you know, me mum and dad have sort of. Uh, Moved from Manchester, they reside now in Wales. Oh, right? yeah. And it is, uh. <coughs> Look at his face! Turning his nose up! No, but it, it is pretty depressing. Do you know what I mean? It's just one of them places that. Uh, it's like you go back in time and that when you go there. I mean, maybe the major city's there, maybe Cardiff is alright. What, even coming from Manchester, it's like going back in time? It's just. Uh, it's like one of them places that w it feels like every day is Sunday. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's just depressing and grey and slate Lots everywhere. Lots of liquors walking around going on late. <laughs> well, yeah, it is, it is the sort of attitude they have, right? This, and this is true because my mum and dad live there and that, right? And they love it, it's alright, it's an healthy place to go when you get older and that. But this this is why they don't move on in Wales. Well, because it's like <laughs> to make another no, no, sorry no. to any Welsh people listening, we're not saying you don't move on. Carl is. No, but- Sorry about the little Chinese shoes again The thing well. is, it's good that, in a way that they do do that, and they don't want to be like, you know, rushing about everywhere, because the way London is, isn't that great either, is it? Because sure. it's totally opposite mm. here, right? Yeah. So I'm not- I'm not having a go. It is a bit dull. I think even people who live there will agree with me. Okay. Right? But, like, one of the shops that my mum and dad use, right, it's only a little sort of villagey type shop, uh, they can't be bothered staying open for hours and hours, right? Because there's not enough people use the shop. Yeah. So what you do is, uh, they get used to what you buy, and they leave they, it out. They put it in a phone box outside. They put it in a phone box. Yeah. So it doesn't get wet. So my dad's loving that. Well, Once yeah. he found that out, it was like brilliant. But that, how is that a bad thing? That's brilliant. Well, it's not for other people. It is for my dad because he's picking up all sorts of stuff. Oh chickens. no, he's not. Oh well, yeah. He's not nicking other people's shopping. Well, it's not like nicking, is it? Because it's not theirs yet. And you've stitched him up on radio. Well, of course, because yeah. they're going to think, who's that? Wh who is there in town with a mank accent? Who, who, keeps, ma who yeah. keeps making phone calls <laughs> and is getting fatter? Yeah, that's the. You've stitched him I right love that. Right I now. love that that your dad was excited when he found out. Oh. I can't believe, I can't believe that he's moved there, he's retired to this little village where it's based on trust and community and he is abusing it, he's using his scally mank ways. Bloody hell, Lakers, there's no bread again. <laughs> there's old women Was going hungry, yeah. their cats aren't getting fed, and your father is just, I can't, oh, that's obscene. That's obscene. Oh, I think it's a die thief. That oh. fella from <laughs> Manchester. I don't even think they've got Sky there yet, have they? They can't listen. They won't. They won't know what's. I think you stitched him right up. I hope you have actually. I hope he goes down for it. I hope he's hounded out of the community like Frankenstein's monster. Yeah. They should get burning torches. Go up to the set fire to his set fire to his cottage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. Well. He's uh, out of the choir. <laughs> I'm just finding more and more things are, are annoying me. Really. Like even. Like, at, the, at that Sony's night, right, you've got a lot of, uh, respectable people going to that thing, you know, people yeah. who are high up at the BBC and that. Yeah. And just the way, you know, it's it's a posh night, there's people there with dinner jackets on and stuff. Mm. And then I, I went to the toilet for a wee. Old fella in there. Mm. I thought he looks, he looks like he's been in the, you know, the radio game for years, probably done loads of award-winning Sony stuff. Yeah. You know, I all the BBC documentaries to do, in-depth stuff, and I thought, you know, I wonder if I'll be like him when I'm, when I'm older, I wonder if I'm as good as him. Thinking all that, he's having a wee in the next urinal. Farts. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah. He just farts. <laughs> 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 Old fella in a dinner jacket, probably hired, and I but thought is that, is that, like they, they that. try to, they think, well, I better do it in here, and it's sort of like a trumpet, and uh, everyone, everyone just goes, yeah, that's fine, what's up with that? You know, uh, yeah, I know what you mean. Is it? It's just the arrogance of doing he, he it. He just did it. Uh, it was. It sounded like a a lost whale. <laughs> 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 I 
and, and he didn't sort of go and try and clinch it. It went, it carried on. And then he went, oh, that was a good one. Really? Old fella. Must have been about seventy. Oh, dear. And- Well, better out than in. Yeah. But it's not that I wasn't- I, was, I wasn't brought up like that, you see. Right. Cos I did it- I mean, I never really did it that much as a kid. Sure. And then- I was at my mum and dad's. You never- sorry, you never did it that much as a kid? What, farted? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Not- not just like, you know, as a joke and that. We are taping this for next year's Sony Award, aren't we? We're taping this, what we're talking about now, aren't we? Mm. To hand in. Cos this is- go on. But I was at- at my mum and dad's, right? And, uh, Suzanne was sat on the floor in front of me, and she was like, oh, rub me neck, it's hurting. So I thought, oh, and I hate doing that, it really do- it bores me, Well, right? she's your girlfriend, for goodness sake. I know, yeah. Dale Winton's different, you're getting paid for that, go on. So I thought, the only way to shift her, I'll let one go, right? So I did that. <laughs> I love that! It's such a loving relationship. <laughs> That's great! Uh, so like doing the washing up badly. Yeah. She won't ask me again. What have you done? I've smashed the cups up <laughs> and I've written, written in excrement across the wall. <laughs> well, that's no good, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I won't do it again then. Give me the marigolds, I'll do it. I've nailed the cat to the fridge. What's up with that? <laughs> yeah. Go on. But yeah, so, so I did that and it worked. She sort of got up and said, oh. And my dad said, what do what you do that for? Yeah. <gasps> what was he thinking? So I said, oh, I, I, hate, I hate rubbing a neck. Does me head in. So he says, you know, I've never trumped. In front of your mother. <laughs> for forty years. Sorry, where was this? Chigley? Why is this family talking like this? <laughs> yeah. um, I've never... Young Carl, I've never trumped in front of your mother in the thirty-five years. <laughs> why you'd- why- what- I don't know what- No, it's just- it's just that he said, you know, we, we've done a lot of things in the family that Hold on, what- what did he say that for? What, he's never- he's never trumped in front of your mother? He just offered that information up. Well, he, he just was surprised that I did it. He said, where have you got that from? Yeah. Whoa, you, you, you did lower intestines, I thought. What do you mean? You have to imagine, imagine there's a class of farting. Oh, uh, no. we haven't, we haven't told our kids about farting. He doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't yeah. do it. We haven't told them about it. We haven't, no, we don't do it in front of them. <laughs> you have to learn it, do you? No, no, but there's a, there's a place. That's what I was always told. Go on. There's a place for that. Cornwall. <laughs> so, um, and, and my mum, you know, it's the same. She, she doesn't do it. Right. If she, if she goes to the toilet to, you know, do, do what you gotta do, she, uh, she makes sure like, she, she'll sort of say things like, are you going out for a walk? <laughs> <laughs> are you going uh, out for a walk? Does she think, th does she know that you're broadcasting this? <laughs> well, yeah. She's probably around at the neighbours now, listening. Yeah. Any of you going out for a walk? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not the door. So she, what, she kind of, she waits until everyone's left, or? She, she doesn't like the thought that everyone, do you know like cats don't like you staring at them when they're doing it? <laughs> I've never stared at a cat while he's doing anything. <laughs> Have you ever had a pet cat? What do you mean? Yeah, go on, go on. No, it's just that cats, uh, you know, if you get them a little litter tray. Yeah. I remember being told like, now mm -hmm. when it does use it, don't sort of go and look at it. <laughs> it, put, it puts it off. I was the same as a kid. I didn't, it, when I had a what nappy. <laughs> Looks at you when you're on the bar. No, no. When I was a kid, and I was in a nappy. Right. Yeah. I used to always, um, like, th there was a corner in the kitchen that yeah. I'd always go to, and everyone would be. Why like, did you go to the toilet? Because they had a nappy on. Oh yeah. Right. How old were you? Fourteen, know, about, <laughs> about three or something. Yeah. Right. And I used to always go to this corner, and yeah. everyone, everyone said, "Right, he's, he's going to the corner. Don't watch. <laughs> don't stare at him." <laughs> Imagine you because you've got the same head. Yeah, you look you like could, a baby. It's just a baby's head. But with that, would you? Okay, would you put a nappy on for fifty quid? No. Yeah, just I'll just be just sitting, just uh, do your work, no, right? Well, anyway, just anyway, sit in right? the corner. <laughs> so I'm not getting, I'm not doing that, right? Come on. So yeah, my mum's like that, and something else she's she's good. I mean, okay, people, go, people go, might go, not know. At dinner party, oh, no, it's Mrs. Pilkerson just in the corner. Just don't look at. Her. Yeah, <laughs> don't look at Mrs. P. She's just she's just in the corner of our kitchen. Don't just look. Away. <laughs> What's she doing? Just, just, she's just doing her business. <laughs> she's, there she is, there she is squatting. Are you going for a walk? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you were saying, Carl. Another, uh, another trick I've learned from her, right? If, uh, if you're using, say, a friend's toilet or something, mm. and, uh, you don't want to leave your mark, um, just use- Go down the toilet and flush it. Use a, uh, take a box of matches with you. Yes. Yeah. Set fire to the curtains. Set fire to the curtains. Calls a distraction. Burn the place down. And have a wonderful <laughs> crap and just leave when the fire brigade get there. I forget it. <laughs> you see, sex on films and all that, right? 
when I was growing up, and I'd go. be watching. No, just just saying an example of this, really. Right. When I was growing up as a kid, and I'd be, you know, watching films with my dad. Mm. Right. He'd really be enjoying a film. Yeah. Right. And then a sex scene would happen. Right. And he'd go on film. On, in or the just film. behind you. Yeah. In the yeah. film, a sex scene would happen. <laughs> Your brother up his old tricks again. <laughs> and he'd, he'd get up and go and make a cup of tea. Right? Right. Typhoon? Right. That he'd stolen from <laughs> some sort of telephone box? <laughs> and like, even recently, he'll- he thinks it, it ruins a film. Do you know what I mean? Cause there's no need for it to happen, is there? Really? Yes. Why? Sometimes it's- it, what it's warranted. If the film itself is yeah, no, some about films it isn't though. Some uh, some no, films not, it of isn't. Course, some films it's arbitrary. I think I think the films that um, him and his dad watch together on Channel Five, yeah. um, <laughs> probably not. Is it only on Channel no, Five in your you house? Not, but let's yeah, if you're watching, you know, I don't know, a late night Friday night, you know, from 1983. Yeah, illegal briefs. <laughs> 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 a beautiful lawyer has to defend a man who may be a killer. She falls in love with him, but does she- does she know the real man? <laughs> oh, oh, dear. You know- you know what I mean, though. Lest you forget, of course, that I, uh- Love heat. <laughs> with the bloke that is now in- go on. You know, of course, that I, according to the, uh, internet movie database, I, um, once appeared in one of those films, in the film Killer Image, a Canadian film, I believe, from 1989. According to that computer, uh, It's all wrong, website, isn't it? It's all wrong. It's, it's all, all wrong. wrong. Of course it is, yeah. Uh, apparently I was in that, and I played the role of Kirk. Was it a porn thing? Uh, no, 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 I think it's just an erotic thriller. Oh, right. I suppose it you only had a very small part though, didn't you? Indeed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But no, do, do you know what I mean? Sometimes you don't need to go that far. Say like in this Jesus programme, right? <laughs> Film. What's it called? The Last Temptation of Christ. <laughs> Jesus, stop talking! You know what, what's his name? Is it Ralph in The Simpsons? Yes. I draw the kitty cat. It's like talking to that. Yeah. No, but right, this temptation thing, right? <laughs> Do you know the- you know often we don't get that many complaints on this show. We don't get very many complaints. And I think that's either because there's no listeners, or B, it's because most people agree with Carl, and that terrifies I know. me. Or they let him off, because it's like, you know, you can plead insanity, you can go mental and yeah. kill a few people, but they go, oh, he's- he's, he's a bit backwards. Exactly. No, but was, was it because, like, they're saying that he was having it away? Or is it because you saw it? It- what got the complaints? The complaint was the very suggestion it was a suggestion. that Christ It was, it was a blasphemous sex. thing, not the fact that you saw an actor's knob. So what about if they just cut it down a bit and you, you like, saw the little stable door closing? <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't the baby Jesus having sex! <laughs> it was the grown man! <laughs> the stable door shut in! No, but oh, you know what the nativity scene! <laughs> Ah, oh, that is brilliant. That yeah, is then, the wise men saying, I can't believe we brought mirror, we should have brought condoms. <laughs> no, no, yeah, yeah. It's two for one offering, Boots. <laughs> yeah, that's what we were thinking. Oh, no, right. consent. It, <laughs> it's just, it's always awful. Should we apologise now to the Christian, Christian church as well? Yeah. So Sorry we, to the little Chinese fellas, uh, little Welsh fellas, and the little Christian fellas. Well, we haven't yeah. said anything wrong. No. No. It's like, you see, when I- when I was growing <laughs> stable up- Stable door! <laughs> I love the idea that in Carl's world, he was born in a stable, just thought, well, I yeah. love this place. Yeah. I'm just gonna stay here the rest of my days. <laughs> this is good here. Oh, brilliant. But, but when I was watching telly with my mum and dad, I mean, it still happens now, right? My dad will sort of go, oh, ruined. Good film ruined. Yeah. Right, if, if some sex scene happens. But, why doesn't he but what are we talking it? about sex scene? Are we talking about a kissing or are we talking about, um, uh, penetration and looking at the camera? Going, just, just are you enjoying this, Pilkingtons? <laughs> what are we talking about? What is sort of extreme levels are we talking about? Right, last time I was down there, right? Yeah. Um, what was it? Uh, meet, meet Joe, meet Joe Black. Meet Joe Black. Meet, meet, meet Joe Black is a terrible yeah, film. Yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> uh, there was a good film, and then you know it's gonna happen, cause like the music comes in, Brad yeah. Pitt's keeping quiet, a woman's eyeing, eyeing him up. Sure. So we might- <laughs> Ah! My mum's- my mum's worked it out already and she's going, uh, anything on the other side, love? She knows, she, she knows. She knows it's, you know, something's, uh... uh well, and so you can be enjoying a film and you can be an hour and ten in, and then some spidey senses of one of them can go, should we turn it over and the other one goes, well, yeah, right. Are you sure it's not them protecting you? from scenes of sex, so that they're- what they're thinking is, what if Carl gets the idea to have sex? Yeah. That could lead to procreation, we don't want any more like him. We've yeah. got to- we've got to end the line here. You sure it's not the doctor keep calling out going, you are keeping away from <laughs> yeah, exactly. women, aren't you? He must never find are out Are you sure they're not embarrassed because they're watching yeah. a sex scene with their son? It, it happens all, every time, right? There's two things that my mum does, right? It's that, if there's sex scene on the telly, she'll go, mm. uh, you know, anything on the other side, love? Uh, and the other thing she always says, if ever there's anything on the telly with Elvis in it, yeah, she goes, oh, I like him, right? And we all know, we sat there, we know what she's gonna say next. Yeah. 
so you don't even bother saying why, right? And she goes, uh, he likes fat, ugly people. He what? He likes fat, ugly people. He didn't always go for, like, the good-looking fans in the crowd. What Elvis did? Yeah. Right. That was always the thing and- I'm like, sorry, now, hold on. I- I don't know what we're doing now with our lives, Steve. Right, wait, wait a minute, right. So, your mum says two things, right? She either says- Is what, there anything else on the other side? Say, or- I like Elvis. There's a pause because you know what she's gonna say next. She says, he liked fat, ugly people. How often does this occur? Well, th because they've got like, you know, Sky, there's a lot of those channels on. They like the music channels. So Elvis always comes on. There's either an Elvis film, there's like, you know, a classic hit by him on And she'll go, I like Elvis. He likes fat, ugly people. And what do you mean he liked fat, ugly people? Is she a fat, ugly person? Because he's that special Vegas show, isn't he, where he's dancing about, right? Mm. And he's got loads of scarves around his neck. Towels. Yeah, and like he always hands them down to the fat, ugly ones. Right. And I always say it's because they're the fat, you know, they've got a sweaty face because they, they can't, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what world they I live in. I don't know in. how we've gone through this. Watch it, what sort of world are you going when you're watching his face? And what do you mean, fat, ugly ones? You mean they're in the front, they're sweating a lot because they're a bit yeah, chubby. Yeah, so she thinks, you know, is giving them a towel because it's But he's really going, wipe your face, you're putting me off, you yeah. fat cow. Stop sweating near me. There's another one. What? So, hairy Chinese kids. Yeah. Jesus. We haven't slagged off hairy Chinese kids. We, we, we slagged off Chinese- we didn't slag anyone off. We just said they really haven't got a town as such and they wear shoes. What do we say? Yeah, little wooden shoes. And what the- well, I just don't know how we got onto Elvis and big fat ugly women. I don't know where we- I don't know how we sidestepped from the last temptation of Christ. Did you see that fat, um, girls and feeders Go program? Go a minute. Eh? Well, Tom Petty first. Oh, brilliant. It's a great song. Breakdown. How many Tom other Petty. radio shows have talked about Last Temptation of Christ, China to Home, yeah. Fat Ugly Women? Yeah. More than 60 minutes. Exactly. Incredible. <laughs> Sony Award winning. Well, it's, the way, it's, it's the way they also said they've now got a new Pope. He's hardly new, is he? <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't they learn from the last one? Sure. You're taking on old people. Yeah, yeah. My dad couldn't even get a gig in being cute. <laughs> <laughs> So, who have we offended? I, I mean, it, 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 the thing is, it's look, because soon our offensiveness isn't going to be sort of like we're feeling about, about offensive, but it's going to be like we're going to be living with Salman Rushdie. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? The things, I mean, that, that that's, that's pretty, you know, don't, don't have a go no, at the Pope, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not having a go at him. It's good but, that you can carry on working and what have you, but I thought everyone <laughs> had to retire at like 60 or whatever. <laughs> oh, bloody hell. But, you know, whatever, if, if you can get away with it. Yeah, why <laughs> couldn't your dad get a, uh, a gig in B&Q? I mean, he goes, he's, he's he's a goes there a lot, doesn't he? He goes there a lot! That's why, <laughs> if you're just joining us, joining us for this one-off show because you're trapped in a bunker somewhere in the Antarctic, you should know this of Carl's dad. He's a thief. He steals things, yeah. and we've, we've openly discussed this before. He steals this from other elderly ladies and elderly people. Perhaps oh, he's not like Raffles, it. though. He doesn't go into their house. He's not a gentleman thief. No, it's, what's it, it, it don't people put, let's put this in context. You know, he's not, he's not a villain, but sometimes when people leave groceries lying around in a public telephone box. No, what it was, where they live now, they've retired, right? They've moved. I won't say where they are, but somewhere quiet, right? And it's so quiet- <laughs> It's not a witness re- uh, relocation <laughs> protection scheme. <laughs> but because, because there's only about eight people living in this village, it's not worth, like, the, the, the like, corner shop. There's only open. eight people living it's, in the village? It's quiet. The it village quiet. of the damned. So, uh, <laughs> So anyway, so rather than keep the shop open, you're meant to call up and go, all right, Harry, uh, I need some milk today. Right. And they stick it in a phone box outside in the shop, and my dad found that out. <coughs> so when he's been out, just stop off at the phone box, have a look mm. at what's, what's left lying around. Yeah. But of the eight, I mean, there's eight people in the village, <laughs> my attention would be instantly drawn to the dodgy mank fella. Mm. I mean, I, I, you know what I mean? It seems, in Manchester you can probably get away with this, there's a lot of scum up there, but down mm. in this little village, you know, you've got a little Miss Marple type and a little, you know, country policeman. He's, he's stopped doing it now, has he? Has he? Stopped doing it, yeah. Cleaned up his act. Yeah. yeah.